my name is Poodle McNugget and welcome to Vintage Key Studio. Today I'm going to be showing you the Rogers Upright Piano. This piano has been in my possession since I was about six or seven and it's, uh, I learned most of my stuff on it and it, it dates from maybe the 30s. The last time it was tuned was in 1998 and it's hardly lost its any tuning since then. And it's moved about five times as well. So it's quite amazing. This is a kind of a experimental piano. We don't really tend to use it much for, you know, sort of like nice piano because we've got the Steinway here. But as a, just a, sta a standard piano, it's it sounds pretty good. Now you may have heard a, a bit of the piano at the beginning when Freddie Mercury was playing his Bohemian Rhapsody tune. He had a little bit of trouble because the key covers of this have started to all fall off because it used to be in a quite a damp house. Still, it's, uh, it's okay. And uh, I'll just give you a quick blast of something on here so you can just sort of get the picture. We've got two microphones here, we've got two AKG414s set to the uh, omnidirectional mode. So it's like picking up sound all around them. And I usually find that's that's a, a pretty good way to record a piano in stereo with just like a, a general overall stereo image of it. You can do all that stuff with the sum and difference, but um, I tend not to bother with that unless someone asks me. You'll also see I've got this old microphone here, which is a, a, an AKG D19. I think it's a D19 200, which is a 200 ohm one. These were very popular at Abbey Road Studios in the 1960s. They were quite cheap to buy, and they were used uh, very like a, 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 a sort of a, an SM58 or whatever, no, an SM57 is used these days for, for drum miking and stuff. But yeah, all of Ringo Starr's kit was mic'd up with the, lots of these. As I say, they're they were very cheap in the 60s, um, but now you'd be um, hard pressed to find one for less than about seven or eight hundred pounds second hand in 2022 but they're, they're such a good quality microphone that they I mean they're dynamic but they they uh, they could pass as a condenser the weight of sound but anyway here's so here's a bit this is just the two microphones here so I'll just play a bit of um something nice what should I play <laughs> So yeah, so this is sort of a, a, a standard, very well made, uh, upright piano um, designed for the home. In the early part of the 20th century, everyone had a piano and you all used to kind of love, that was the entertainment and everyone would sort of sit round and sing along to such hits as Barber's Adagio for Strings. So that's when, where this dates from, and it's been used. When, before I had it, it was in, in, a, in a, a lady's house, and it wasn't used very much. And then since I've had it, it's just been played and played and bashed around, and it's scratched to pieces. Um, but it's it's a, a piano. I can never I never get rid of this. It's like, it's like a part of my my hands. It's got eighty five keys on this one. Most pianos have eighty eight, but this one's only got eighty five. Um, no idea why that was, but it ends on a 
G in and it gets stuck when you do that. So I said at the beginning that this is a used in this studio as an experimental piano. I have used it in the past as an echo chamber. I've sung into it to get like a special kind of effect. Um, and it's been used as, as an echo chamber. So very like we've done before on, on the Steinway video where my colleague Louisa played saxophone into it. But if I just speak into the piano. <laughs> that's quite nice. I'll just play you a little clip of a, 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 a song that I recorded in 1989 when I was 14. And this uses the piano as a kind of a voice, sort of a voice modulator, but it's basically just me singing into the piano. And it also uses any, the reverb that you can hear on it um, is uh, the piano strings. So there's a, a little snippet of the song called Observation. Said I would not survive, so they sent me to sleep. Threw me down the chute. Now I'm locked in a coffin and I can't get out. Now, some people may have heard of the term prepared piano. Now, this was a term coined by, I think it was John Cage, the, the composer, uh, minimalist composer. He did all sorts of things and did stuff like sort of sticking bits of rubber in the, in the, the strings and using metal sort of sounds to sort of pluck the strings and messing about with like metal and all sorts of things quite a few of you watching who's who've searched for this video prepare piano have probably seen where people have stuck drawing pins in the hammers to give it a tack piano sound like mrs mills piano which is all well and good but the moment you stick a, pi a needle in or a, a pin through the felts on these things it doesn't take very long for the felts to split and then come off so i've seen lots of pianos that have had this done to it and then they just all fall to bits and they have to get refelted. I have made a special adaptation, an add-on to this piano, which enables you to get the metallic saloon bar sound piano, uh, famous on, on records by Mrs Mills in the 1960s. Also the Beatles used it as well on on tracks like Penny Lane. And the way I've done it is based on a a challenge piano that had a thing in it called a mandolin rail which was basically a a, a rail that had um hanging down i suppose it was like fingers of felt and they had some sort of metal tip on them and basically when the when the hammer hits the string it pushes on a piece of metal and hits the string with the metal so this is what I made here. I made this a few years ago. It's, it's starting to fall a bit, a little bit, but basically it's just two pieces of sort of baton wood and I just stuck some felt on it and then cut little fingers on it and stuck washers on every single one. And I had to line it up with this piano so it would, it would fit over the, um, the supports here. And basically all you do, so now so that the... the uh, the metal washers are on this, this side where the strings are. So at the moment the piano is like that. If you stick it over like that, you then get... Uh, some of them are, are a little bit twitched, um, bent over, so they, they make some of the other notes go... Now some of you who may have watched some uh, classic 70s comedy shows, sitcoms, may... Uh, recognize this. That was 
was the theme from George and Mildred, the first theme, because there was another one a few years later that went... <laughs> but it wasn't done on the piano like it was done on a, a sort of synth. Okay, so that is the, the kind of homemade mandolin rail. But it's very, very useful. I've used that on a lot of recordings here. Um, I've done some stuff with, with a, a band who did a sort of a, a 60s um, Lee Hazelwood um, kind of song. And it was like... <laughs> those sort of things. And it sounds like a kind of a, a, a massive auto harp, in a way. So, yeah, it's, it's a nice, um, nice timbre and um, cost about about four quid to make so that's that one as I mentioned earlier the Challen pianos actually had a mandolin rail built into them some of them did and um, there used to be on, on this piano there's just the the soft pedal and the sustain pedal in a Challen piano on the very left hand side there's another little pedal which engages the the, the mandolin rail on it but I've unfortunately I've never actually seen one I would like to buy one one day but um, I've never seen one once I made that I thought well I may as well make what they call a practice pedal rail um, this one is um, same sort of idea but on this one it's just felt so there's no no metal or anything on this one on lots of pianos certainly sort of 1950s 1960s onwards they started making upright pianos that had a practice pedal so this so it would have had a pedal in the middle which engaged a, a long strip of felt, which would then enable you to sort of sit and practice your um, your fur release quietly. And I think they stipulated that you had to do it in the dark as well to save energy. You can hear that the the notes sort of linger on on this piano it's because some of the dampers aren't quite um, touching the strings because as I say this, this thing's been uh, moving around quite a lot but it's all part of the character so anyway so there's that that one which is uh, another add-on and now I was going to do do another one based on this idea which is where you press down on the sustain pedal and slide pieces of paper under the um, the dampers is on there. Can't do it all there. Um, be careful. Every time you press on, oop, if you press on the sustain pedal and don't hold onto the paper, it falls through. So now, um, so I was going to make one with, it, with pieces of paper in it, but um, obviously uh, it wouldn't take very long for the paper, if you're playing it a lot, the paper to just sort of break and fall to bits. I'm not sure who first used this method of playing with bits of paper in a piano. <laughs> Avid Beatles fans will possibly recognise um, the sound from um, the song... Uh, for You Blue, which was on Let It Be um, and in the Get Back film. And Paul McCartney's sort of playing... Um, um, um. Or something like that, anyway. Um, but yeah. It's like a cross between a, a, a piano and a kazoo. That is. I remember doing that with this very piano when I was about six because I saw my dad do it once and my mum came in and uh, my life wasn't worth living. I wasn't allowed to use the piano for a week. Just while I think of it, here's a little bit of just the... Um, the AKG D19 mic, because I mentioned it earlier and then forgot to play anything and play how it sounded. Um, I'll just I'll just put it down a bit there. And then I'll play. Um <laughs> So 
we've prepared piano um, with sticking bits of metal in it and sticking bits of rubber in it. It's always been sort of pretty popular since composers like John Cage started to write pieces of music for it. And he, he, would, he would do a score which had like a diagram of which strings had to have whatever bits of wood it stuck in them. So it would have it sort of threaded through or, or, or like a rubber stuck into it or something or other. Pianos have also been abused for sound effects. There are quite possibly a lot of 50s and 60s horror films. I can't think of any off the top of my head that use it. But I do know that um, probably the Roger Corman, Roger Corman films um, must have had it in there. Uh, where basically you'd have something spooky happening in a horror scene like it in a, in a dark castle and all of a sudden you'd hear this and then a few years later in 1967 you may have gone out and bought the rolling stones their satanic majesty's request at lp and you might have heard stuff like this Uh, on the beginning of their song um, 2000 Light Years From Home. It's also been used on some sound effects as well for television shows um, and probably the most famous use of, a, of pianos or piano strings for um, a sound effect is this one. And I'll just get down here and do, and do the, the noise. I'll try and do the noise and see if anyone can work it out before I tell you what it is. Well, what it was supposed to be. <coughs> I've got a two pence piece here <coughs> and I'm going to scrape it up and down the strings. There you go. I'll do it down on the bottom string. It doesn't sound a huge amount like it because I think they layered the sound up. Right, that, believe it or not, was how they got the sound for the TARDIS on Doctor Who. And uh, I, I'm not sure if they la layered it up a few times. Uh, oh, hang on a minute. I've just found one P. I've got three pens. Yeah, so that was how that was done. And uh, it's probably not a good idea to do it too much because you end up uh, not so bad with the big strings, but the smaller strings, you probably end up uh, breaking the wire wound bit and they'll, they'll snap. So anyway, that's the Rogers piano being used and abused by me. Um, and But, but always... Uh, well loved and uh, taken care of. So down here, just very quickly, we've got the, the pedals, the sustain pedal, which you press that down, this piece of wood pushes up, cantilever thing pushes up, you can see it basically pushes onto a lever up here and then releases the dampers that are on the strings. So, so. soft pedal you should be able to see there that on this piano it doesn't on, on some pianos what it does is it shifts all of the hammers to one side so that they only strike two of the three strings and um, on this piano what it does is it moves the hammers slightly closer to the strings so it's, it's so that there's less there's less of a, a force when you hit the note down so you can't can't really play it quite so hard so anyway, so that's the uh, the Rogers piano. I hope you've enjoyed this YouTube video. If you can like and subscribe and all that kind of thing, it will uh, enable you to see some more of these uh, very um, long-winded descriptions of things that I do. Oh, I'm feeling a bit cross-eyed there. Thank you very much indeed for watching. Have a good one.